Today we're going to do a quick introduction to R's function optim. Now if you've never seen before functions that take other functions as arguments, then this is going to be a little bit new, but I think with a simple example it shouldn't be that bad. And I'll try to be explicit with my language so as to help you through uh, each step of the way. The function optim is, let's call it a programming function, though there is an underlying mathematical algorithm behind the scenes, that minimizes, or at least attempts to minimize, a, and we'll call it math function, that's already defined in R. Or if it's not already defined in R, we can define the function however we want to be minimized by the function optim. To get going, let's just consider a simple example that hopefully we're all familiar with. And I think if we have even a rough sketch of this function to work with in our minds, we should get a better understanding of how computers can approximate solutions to the problem, find the value x that minimizes the function f. Now computers are inherently finite. They are not infinite in the sense that limits exist on computers. Computers are instead inherently finite. So in order to minimize an arbitrary function here, x squared, I find it helpful to keep in mind that you are like this little person trying to walk downhill on the wall of this function. And the best you can do to walk downhill on a finite computer is take an arbitrary number of steps of some fixed step size. And if you get to a point down here at the bottom such that walking any further in any direction doesn't minimize further the function f, then you will have maybe achieved your best approximation of the value of x that minimizes the function f. Now we, I think, know that the value, let's call it x superscript asterisk, and I'll put the asterisk in parentheses to remind you that this is not a exponent, not a power, but specifically some extra notation to say the value of x that minimizes the function f is zero. We all believe that the value of x, call it x star, that minimizes f is x equal to zero. Now, in order to find that value, what R does is starts at a specified place. Let's call that x superscript zero. To say at that starting point, x zero, you will begin walking downhill in step sizes to be chosen by the function optim. After one step, you will end up at x1. And after some number, the function optim will tell us when it's done running. After some number of steps, the value x that minimizes the function f, or at least an approximate of the value that, that minimizes the function f, is x star. Whatever optim returns for x star is going to be optim's best guess for the value that minimizes the function f. Now when we go into R, no, let's just go into R and try this out. Here in R, we can just define ourselves a function f to be the value, uh, to be the function that squares its arguments. 
and we can call optim by choosing an initial starting point that's let's say four, but that was really kind of arbitrary. We are going to walk downhill along the function f and we're going to use the method that I will just recommend for us to use all semester long named L-BFGS-B. The L stands for limited memory. The last B stands for bounded in case the um, argument to the function has bounds on it. That will be the case for solving likelihood problems. We will see in another video. And B, F, and G, S are four dudes' names that I can't think of right now. If we run this function, you will see the output is a list with named elements. The first element is named par, which is supposed to stand for parameter, and it holds the value that we were previously calling x star. It is an approximation of the value that minimizes the function f. In this case, it is a number so close to zero that I'm not gonna differentiate it from zero. The, arg the item named value, the element named value, the element named value holds the evaluation of the function f at the minimum value. The element named counts is how many steps it took us to get from the starting value 4 to the minimum value 0. Convergence is an indicator that tells us whether or not everything worked appropriately on the computer. We always want convergence to be 0. And if convergence is not 0, there will be some kind of warning in the message element. Generally, what we're going to be interested in is the element named par, so if you want, you can extract that immediately from the return object from optim, and you can see that we just get out that specific scalar itself.